There's a lot of things that can go wrong with young foals, but some weird things you might see are actually harmless. So if you're not sure if you need to call the vet or take a deep breath, I think this video might help. I'll tell you about each of the cases that I've seen over the years, explain what is happening, but I will also tell you when you do need to be concerned. So let's get into it. Sometimes they come out looking like German Shepherd puppies. One of the ears, usually just one, got squished either during gestation or during birth. And while it's cute, you might be wondering if they're permanently going to look like the wind is blowing a little bit too hard. But usually within a day or so, the ear will sort itself out. So take those cute photos right away because it won't last. Sometimes, however, the same thing will happen, but instead of an ear, it's an eyelid, and that does require a quick vet intervention. Sometimes the eyelid is curled inward, and sometimes it's the opposite, and it's flipped out a bit. Either situation are irritating to the eye and should get some attention. It's usually a pretty quick and easy fix, so if you don't want to wait too long because the eye could get damaged. While a filly born without a penis is kind of expected, a colt born without one can be a little bit disconcerting. Colts sheath are small and tucked right to the belly wall, so sometimes it's hard to see. The penis itself is retracted all the way back for a few days after birth. You can't see it. Sometimes you can't even feel it. So the first few hours and maybe the first few days, they will actually pee without extending it out. So you'll just see urine leaking out of the sheath, but no penis. Don't worry, it's in there. And once it comes out and when it comes down, the other issue is that it can take them a few weeks to learn how to retract it. And that's also normal. Now, if you see pee dribbling out of the belly area before they drop their penis down, take a minute to make sure it's really coming down from the sheath. Because if the urine is dribbling out of the navel, that's a call to the vet. So just look carefully. Now, the fact that they're unsteady on their feet when they first get up, that makes perfect sense. But what about running into the wall or bumping into their mother? Well, newborn foals don't see very well. Now, they're not blind like puppies or kitten, and some of them have good vision, but some of them have a blurry vision at first. And that's why they might appear a little bit friendly, because they'll walk right up to you. That's because they don't really see you, and their instinct tells them that the biggest thing in their field of vision is probably their mother, so they naturally gravitate to it. It's nothing to worry about. Most foals will have their normal vision by day three or so. I don't like mine out in the big field at first because foals will run into the fence, and one of the reasons is they don't see the fence very well. And if they see it, they don't know what it is anyway, so I wait a few days. However, if the foal's eye is cloudy, foals can be born with cataract. Or if the blindness or blur, the blurry vision it persists more than two or three days, then yes, you might want to get the vet to take a closer look at those eyes. We joke that foals' legs are so long that they're, they're like they're on still. Well, that's not a joke when you're way up there and you're trying to lie down there. It's a long way down. The coordination required to fold those legs and the trust the drop down to the ground is sometimes a little bit too much for some foals and they can't lie down or they won't lie down. But they need to lie down. They're babies. They need their deep sleep. So when that happens, I usually pick a moment when they're clearly drowsy and they're kind of starting to drift to sleep. And I pick them up flop them on their side. They generally fall asleep instantly. They're so exhausted by then. So make sure you have some nice, thick, soft bedding to encourage them to lie down. But if they still won't drop on their own, do it for them the first few times. They will figure it out. When foals don't lie down, they often get swollen ankles, that is edema in their lower limbs around the fetlock. And it's often because their circulatory system is still not as developed as it will be in a few weeks or months. They're stocked up, quite literally. Make sure that they're not lame, that it's not hot to the touch, and if it goes away with a little bit of exercise, it's probably just a bit of edema. Now, if it persists, it might be worth investigating a bit further. This slight edema is not to be confused with hot, swollen joint and folds that are not doing well. Those are clearly an emergency. Among other things that young foals don't do very well, and that's to regulate their own body temperature. The first few days, 
they don't sweat. So if you're in a hot climate, you need to keep them in the shade and maybe even make sure that their skin is kept wet to help with heat dissipation. If you're in a very cold climate, like where we are in Alberta, the funny thing is that they'll probably be born with a thicker coat. They will be able to shiver right from the get-go and that will get them warmer. In that sense, being a little bit cold is not as much an issue for a newborn as being too hot. That being said, you can definitely put a blanket on them or in a pinch, use the zipping up a zipped up hoodie, right? The one with the zipper. So you put the leg in where the arms would go, you cut off the hoodie because they don't need it, and then you zip it up the back. If you combine that with a nice little fold blanket or a big dog blanket, they'll be nice and cozy. I had a fold born at minus 35 degree and she wore that combination for the first 24 hour and after that she was just fine. If you want to know more about how folds adapt to the outside world just after birth, check out this video. What comes out of your fold can be a little bit worrisome at first. The first thing that comes out is meconium. It's black, it's sticky, it looks like little pellets. In fact, it almost looked like miniature horse manure. But later on, very quickly, a couple of hours later, they start producing this soft, yellowish, mustard-looking paste. And you might be wondering if all is well in there. It is. It'll last a few days, then it will turn darker, and eventually it will look like manure. However, if it's liquid and there's lots of it, that's a call to the vet. They should not have diarrhea in the first few days of life. Later on, when they're about a week old or a bit older, they might get some runny manure, and that's just their digestive tract adapting to eating grass and, you know, just putting, having more fiber. But diarrhea in the first few days, no. L some of that loose, sticky, it looks like a paste, that's perfectly normal. Splints, you know those little bony bumps that come from exercising on hard ground? Yeah, sometimes they're born with those. They're not splint per se, but they're bumps on their cannon bone. It's not an issue. They will get remodeled away in a few months. If the foal is not lame, happily using its new legs just fine, you can put that down to weird, but harmless. Speaking of legs, a lot of babies are born with lax tendon or kind of twisted legs. They look bad, they look like they shouldn't be able to walk, and yet they get up and they get down and they're kicking and they're running. That's the case, give it some time. You're looking for improvement over weeks, not hours. But as long as it is improving and the baby is starting to look more and more normal, that means the tendon are getting stronger, their legs are getting realigned with some exercise, and it's probably just fine. If the foal is uncomfortable, that's often the case with contracted tendon. Or worse, if it can't get up to nurse, then that is clearly a situation where you want to bring your vet on board. But if it's just because it looks a bit like a Gumby horse, Give it time to get stronger and track the progress over weeks before getting too worried. All foals at some point will eat the manure of their mom, often the freshest that they can find. They're responding to an instinct that tells them that their guts need to be populated with the right bacteria to function correct. And getting a gut bacteria transfer early on in life by eating manure is the best and the quickest way nature has found for this to happen. Now, some kind of develop a taste for it and will eat more of it, but still not a problem. Just make sure your mare on a good parasite control system and that you deworm your foal following your vet's direction and it won't be an issue. It's just kind of gross to see them with that green lipstick around their mouth from eating fresh manure. Got one behavior that is annoying because it can come with complication of sand colic is when they eat dirt or sand. Most often it doesn't cause an issue, surprisingly, but unless they eat a lot of it, of course. But I think it's mostly due to curiosity or boredom, and in some cases a certain acquired taste for it. I I've seen foals out on pasture dig a hole in the grass just to get to the dirt. And no, it's not a mineral deficiency. There is no proof of that. My mares have a balanced diet, they and the foals have access to some loose mineral, and they're generally not that interested at that age but they do like to nibble on some dirt. I think some of them just like the taste and the feel of the dirt, and like many things, they'll eventually outgrow it. Once they realize grass is more tasty than that, they will spend more time eating grass. If it seems a bit excessive, you should absolutely give them some psyllium husk to help move it out of their system. There's very little else you can do about it, to be honest. 
it drives me nuts when I get one of those, but I have learned to take a deep breath and introduce them to the big medication syringe and wait for the habit to pass. What else have you seen your foal do that might at first have given you a small heart attack, but in the end turned out to be just fine? Let me know in the comment. Now, none of those things that are listed are all that common, but they can come up and they can be a source of worry. And that's kind of the point of the video and of this channel in general, sharing my experience to help. If you're interested in that kind of things or you're expecting some fools, I think that's valuable information. Anyway, I'll see you next week.